Join us, friends. Great Scott, spa guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost, spa guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right, all right. It is the spa guy, and it is... Globe trotting with Shree. And we are not wishing Cotton was a monkey, but we know that there's a lot of people that are. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to continue talking about going to Europe. Uh, last week we talked about uh, going to Finland, going to Denmark, and then from Denmark, I ended up in the Netherlands and we're gonna talk about the Netherlands. Now I mentioned last week um, that the Colonel is from the Netherlands. Elvis's manager was from the Netherlands and a lot of people would call it Holland. But the reality is, is Holland is, they actually have North Holland and South Holland and that is like a province of the Netherlands. The Netherlands is, is like different states, if you will. And Trey is trying a new background and it's about to drive him crazy. And I'm expecting the background, by the way, to fall at any moment. It's not gonna fall. It's, it's and perfect. hopefully it's not going to fall. Right. I hope not. <laughs> so, so Trey is struggling a little bit with, uh, uh, with his background, but that's all right. My background is just my background and it's, and it's actually real. In, in fact, oh, so too. you see this guy right here. Look at that guy right there. Yeah. This, this Turkey. I can't I see that Turkey right there. Yeah. And, um, so, we were just going to discuss going to Europe, and I actually did a lot of different stuff. And Trey, have you ever been to Europe? We've talked about this before. I haven't been out of the U.S. But you got to get your passport, man, so we can go, because we got a lot of stuff we got to go see. I know, that's right. Uh, later this year, I'm going to be traveling, uh, not to Europe, but I'm going to be traveling to Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I will be doing that and filming some stuff over there. But what we were going to talk about is uh in the netherlands i did a lot of stuff in the netherlands i actually stayed there for several weeks and um and i'm just going to go through kind of my memories from there and things that um that were uh things that stuck out to me one thing is in the last episode i mentioned my friend coming from poland uh chris came from poland and picked me up in the netherlands and we were staying at a place right outside of Eindhoven or Eindhoven uh, in the Netherlands named Sonnenbrugel was the name of the, uh, the, the place that we stayed, the actual hotel. And it's like a five or uh, five star hotel. Sonnenbrugel. Sonnenbrugel. S-O-N. I'm going to try to remember how it's spelled. It's something like S-O-N-E-N-B-U-R-G. L E I think, or okay. maybe E L. And it was a really, really, really nice hotel. And that hotel was used in world war II. Oh, I think nice. the, uh, it was used as like a, um, from my memory, it was used like a, a hospital during world war II, but that particular place was a five star it had. And I've got videos, as I mentioned on the other channel where I go and stay in there and they have, um, Funny stuff, or I think it's funny, and some people probably think it's silly, but one of the things was this, um, um, I'll try to remember the name of it, but I went in, every time you would get in the, in the elevator, it had a name of the brand of the elevator that would make me say something. What was the name of that brand? It was, um... It was an Eng it was an English word, but it was actually the brand name of the elevator. And I'll try to think of it. It's not coming to me right this moment. But the elevators were tiny. It's literally one person elevator. A one and you would elevator. get it was a one person elevator, and you would get in there, and it said something. Um, dang on it, Billy. Why can't I think of it? I'll try to look it up while while we're going. But uh, I had a room there that I could open the window. And like I mentioned it before, it was a really nice weather there. So I would just keep the window open. And I was on the second or third floor. I think I was on the maybe the third floor. And I would just keep my window open because it was such nice weather. The temperature outside was perfect for the temperature in the room. And um, but the hotel had a, a restaurant there and they had lobster bisque. 
And Jim Murray that sang with Elvis with the Imperials with, was with us there, of course. And Jim, I, I'm a Facebook friends with Jim. And Jim has been over there a couple of times since I've been there, more than a couple. I think when I went, uh, when all this happened was two, 2018. And he's been there multiple times since then. And in a lot of posts, he will talk about that, that lobster bisque over there. When I'm telling you it was fantastic, it was fantastic. And if I went today, I would get the lobster bisque. And the, the restaurant was part of the hotel. It was part of the thing. And they had it where you could walk through the, uh, you would have to go outside to walk across the courtyard to go to the restaurant. But when you walked in, they had uh, excellent breakfast in there. They had the, uh, I would go in there and get the eggs. You remember they had the eggs that were, were whipped up with, with uh, milk in them. But the food was fantastic there. Um, and they always had things like, uh, we, I would get the coffee with the little uh, sugar cubes. And you could go sit out back too. There was a canal back there. And there was a little courtyard. And you could sit. And I actually walked, a couple of days I would walk and go down to this big canal that was down there. And they had a drawbridge that we've seen recently. I think I saw one of the drawbridges when you and I went to New Orleans. And I mentioned to you that it was a drawbridge like you see in uh, in the Netherlands. And the drawbridge didn't do like our traditional drawbridges like this. It actually went straight up. The road oh, yeah. went up. Yeah, yeah, that was New Orleans. And it was lift up, lift up. And they had one right down the street there that I think I filmed that I'm pretty sure I did and put it in those videos. But you know, the Netherlands are a lot of canals uh, and Amsterdam would be one of the places, which is part of Holland, but the Amsterdam is part of the Netherlands. And when I think of Amsterdam, I think of canals. Everybody does, I would think. And another thing about the Netherlands is it is actually below sea level. So if it was not for the, pump systems that they have 90 I think they told me 90% of it is under what would be underwater if it wasn't for the pumps so all of these places are literally underwater and they are the ones their uh, engineering is the way that um going back to uh, uh New Orleans New Orleans is technically under sea level if you remember when we were there I mentioned this to you it's a bowl. And you remember where we went to get those, uh, those, what was those things that we ate that had sugar all over them? Uh, remember you went in to get those? The bin, the bin, um, beignets. beignets yeah. So when we were there by the beignets, Elvis actually went there and there's a place that's like, uh, has to do with the French there. And we could walk up those stairs and stand on the top of that and look at the water, at the sea level, and then look back at the city and it was below us. You remember that? Below when us, we yeah. were in that little area there? Yeah. And Elvis and June and uh, and Vernon and Gladys went there, actually. But the reason that they were able to engineer where the water stays out of there was because of the engineering in the Netherlands, which the vast majority of the Netherlands is under sea level. And I'm actually studying... Um, uh, because I'm getting ready to go to Israel and I'm studying about things that are in Israel. Do you know that, that things like the Dead Sea are five or 600 feet below sea level? They're way down in a bowl, five or 600 feet. And uh, which is pretty yeah. crazy when you think about it, but they're way below sea level. And uh, so the sea is up here and the water runs down into, yeah. down the Jordan River, down into the Dead Sea. And it's just fascinating the way that um, these bodies of water that are below sea level work, because you would think that everything would be above sea level. It would have to be, but that's not just literally not the way it is. So anyway, I would walk around that little town, uh, Sonnenbrugel, and I remember going down and I went into a graveyard. There was a big tower there with a clock on it in front of the graveyard. And when we would have run McDowell's trying to call me, and uh, actually Tyler. And uh, when we were um, in the front of that uh, clock tower, that thing was built in like, I'm thinking the 1700s, that clock tower from my memory. But there's all these things. When you're over in Europe, there's things that are just so old, it just blows your mind. Because here in the States, if you get something that's from the 1700s, that's old. That's yeah. not old over there. Not at all. 
But I remember going through and going to a graveyard and people were walking through the graveyard. And as you went through the back of the graveyard, it actually went to that canal too. And there was these little bridges that crossed the canal back there. And also these um, gazebos like where people could go sit by the, by the, the water there behind the graveyard. It was just a lot of really scenic places to go and walk and enjoy. Another thing I remember is when we went into, we arrived at, at Eindhoven first because we flew into the airport. We go into Eindhoven and then from Eindhoven, we went to, to the Sonnenbrugel. And I remember when we pu first pulled into Eindhoven, there was these giant bowling pins and bowling balls. And when I'm saying giant, those bowling pins, that bowling ball had to be 15 feet around. And it was just giant on the side of the road. They have all these things around the city like that. Like and I mentioned last week, go ahead. Like a decoration or a... Yeah, like a uh, a decoration. I would call it maybe even a sculptor. You know, maybe they would consider it art. And I saw, remember seeing things like that around the city. But in Eindhoven, that was where the CD was created. You know, the compact disc and a lot of other things, a lot of innovations. I'm actually looking... Um, I have a Philips TV here. Y'all remember probably Philips Magnavox. If you ever see the Philips with one L, that's the Philips from uh, from Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And I remember going into the, um, there There was different times that I stayed there. I stayed at Sonnenbrugel. After I was off of the tour, I actually stayed at a hotel right downtown in Eindhoven that I could walk, I could literally walk to the, to the train station. It was, I could, I could see it out of my hotel room window. I could see the top of it or could see the trains going by. It was that close. And I even rented a bicycle. So, so I'll jump, I'll fast forward because there's, um, there's other things that went on there, but I want to fast forward to pass that because when I went to Germany, that'll be another episode. So my friend came and picked me up at Sonnenbrugel. We went to Germany and came back. And then I ended up staying downtown in Eindhoven and taking the train and spending a lot of time there. So we'll fast forward to that. Okay. So we get to Eindhoven. I check into the hotel there. And I remember thinking, well, I'm going to go in the morning. I'm going to get up and go get McDonald's tomorrow morning. Because the thing that I love about McDonald's is you can always count on the Egg McMuffin and a hash brown because that's just McDonald's. That's what McDonald's does. And if you're getting up and you're wanting to get something to eat for breakfast, that's an easy thing that you can go get, right? So right. I get up at my normal time, seven o'clock in the morning. I usually get up between seven and 7.30. And I got up, got dressed, went outside and I'm walking to the McDonald's and I go and none of it is open. Nothing. At eight o'clock in the morning, none of it's open. I go and there's no restaurants open at eight o'clock in the morning. And I couldn't believe it. And uh, so I ended up going and renting a bicycle. And I ended up going and getting me a an electric bike. It's my first experience with electric bicycle. It had a throttle on it and it was multiple speeds, but it's not as modern as the electric bikes. Now I own an electric bike now, which is very modern with uh, six speeds. And it's got a speedometer and headlights and taillights. It's very much like a motorcycle. And it'll go really, really it'll go faster than you want to go. But I think that one from my memory was a three speed. And I went to a bicycle shop to get it. And the bicycle shop was also like a restaurant and a bar. But in the back was a bicycle shop. And of course, there's bicycles everywhere there. There's You go to the train station. There's a, I show it in the videos. There's um, well, in fact, let me, let me look it up so I can show you some pictures. And, uh, my wife and daughter have decided that they're going to start texting right now and they are texting like crazy and, um, asking what you're doing. Probably. No. And, uh, they're just texting back and forth. But the problem is, is it's ringing in my ear the whole time. Oh yeah. You're hearing the, yeah, and I'm hearing the ding. This was the bowling pins, by the way. So I'll show you a couple of things that I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's so that would be kind of like art. Yeah, I would say that would be kind of like art. And it's just on the side of the road as you as you get into Eindhoven. Mm -hmm. And this is an example of the bicycles. This is at the train station. And look at the amount of bicycles. Yeah, they're texting you now. Yeah. Now, well, that's that's somebody else texting me and you. 
So look at the amount of bicycles is just crazy. And they're everywhere like that. And what's so funny is the the name for a bicycle garage, the the name of a bicycle garage in the Netherlands is a Stalling, like my last name. That's the, the Dutch name for bicycle garage. Uh, so yeah. they're just bicycle places that was, like that everywhere. That's what I was going to ask you was, um, was is there as many cars on the streets over there, at, like here in the States, or does more people ride bicycles and walk or more a people? A lot of people ride bicycles. There's literally bicycle paths everywhere, and that's the Eindhoven train station, and that's yeah. how you spell it, E-I-N-D-H-O-V-E-N. And so I would go to the train station and you could go there and leave your bicycle at the train station, just chain it up, or you could take the bicycle on the train with you and take it to the next town. So yeah. they had places where you could keep the bicycle on the train, take it to the next town and go off and just ride. And so my first experience with it was I went and rented that bicycle at that place that I was telling you about. And they sold, they sold like uh, uh, the real thin tired 16 speeds that the racers would would ride. They even had a bicycle museum in there for racing bikes. And when I'm saying racers, I'm talking about like the um, the Tour de France type racers, you know, those kinds of things. They had a museum in there with those kinds of bicycles. All that's in those videos. But I rented that bicycle and then I'm riding it back and I tried to hold my camera while I was riding, which I had to throttle with my right hand and my right hand's my camera hand. And so I couldn't do that. So I actually took it and hooked it to the back of the bicycle with like a bungee cord. But then it shakes from the bicycle. So the, the footage didn't, none of it came out very well. So then I tried to switch to other kinds of other ways of filming. So I, I figured out that there was a place in, uh, and you can look it up. It's called Best, B-E-S-T, just the way you would think that it was spelled. And there was a special McDonald's in Best. And that somebody told me that there was a giant Michael Jackson statue in Best. And was, they they were absolutely factual. So I let remember. me look that up real quick. Yeah, you went there and you filmed it. And I rode my bicycle there. And the, um, the bicycle, it was about 30 miles. No, I'm telling you wrong. It was about, about 15 or 16 miles there and 15 or 16 miles back. You rode a bike all... I rode that bicycle all the way out there, but there's bike lanes all the way there and all the way back. Wow. And and the beauty was, is I could film things like I stopped and filmed a real um, uh, windmill that you would think of being in the Netherlands, right? And it was a real for real windmill. And I stopped and filmed that. And I filmed several things on the way. But when I got out there, this was at the McDonald's. <laughs> you see how tall it is. It's giant. That's Michael Jackson. And when you go inside there, so that was May the 8th, uh, 2018. When you go inside there, so I'm going to look it up by May the 8th. I remember when you go inside, it was really a cool uh, how they did McDonald's there. Yeah, well, it's got a lot of different things like um, this, by the way, was the bicycle that I rented. You okay. see, it's got a battery on the back. It's very old school. Yeah. And um, And that's an example of me putting it in the in the, the thing where you lock it up in front of your hotel. That's literally in front of the hotel. So they have those things on the street where you push the top of your bike up and you can chain it to that thing. Yeah, and it's there the next morning. And it's there the next morning. But I don't, I mean, I didn't see, I don't think there's a lot of theft and that kind of stuff going on there. I just don't think that that's really a thing. But this right here. Up there, huh? If they do this was like that. an example of that, uh, that what I'm saying is a real windmill. That's, that's the real thing. Boy, I'm getting more comments right now that I've gotten all day. That People trying to call and everything while we're doing this. And so inside of the uh, restaurant, now this is inside of a McDonald's. That is Marilyn Monroe and her dress blows up. She turns. And okay. it'll blow her dress up and it's turning. This is not motion. This is just a picture. And she's turning. And then they have stuff like um, Elvis and Ann Margaret. Yeah, I thought they had Elvis represented in there. Yeah. And then they have uh, a car. Look, this is a, uh, a Corvette upside down on the roof. Wow. And you see Elvis and Ann Margaret over there. 
But the funniest thing that I saw, remember I mentioned Hesburger. Hesburger was a copy of McDonald's. It's the the Finnish version, or it, they may be everywhere over there, but I ate at a Hesburger in Finland. And basically, Hesburger had a, a copy of the Big Mac, where it was a bun, a piece of meat, a flat piece, another piece of meat, and another bun. They had one as well. But this is what's so funny. Look, this is Elvis in Maryland eating Big Macs. I remember that. That's yeah. in that McDonald's. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I've never seen anything like that in the States, man. If they did that stuff, it would make McDonald's really cool. Yeah. Why but, don't um, do it? I, I don't know. But I rode out there, and from my memory, it was about, um, I think it was 15 or 16 miles, and I could be off a little bit, but it was something like that. And they even had Elvis stuff in the, um, you see on the jukebox that says Elvis Presley? Oh, yeah. And so they, he was really well represented there, but I rode my bicycle out there to see that. And then I rode back and, um, I went to, so keep in mind, so something else that happened that same day, and this is very American, you know, I mentioned that the, the food is good and some of it's pretty good and some of it's meh. So that particular night, the same night that I rode my bicycle out there, I was riding back and it got dark on me. And I remember getting back and going, man, I would love, I'm so hungry. I would love to have something really, really, really good. And I went into the square part down there where they have the restaurants. There's almost every town you go into, there's a square where there'll be tables outside and chairs, no cars in there. And you could sit around and talk and and they have uh, pubs and they have uh, all of these places you can eat outdoors. Just excellent restaurants. And one night I got a hamburger at one of those places with a high top. And I filmed it and show you the hamburger and talk about all that. But this particular night, I just wanted something. I wanted old school home food. So I'm riding through that place. And I, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a sign. And I went, I can't believe that's here. It was a Five Guys Burgers. So I stopped and went in this Five Guys and got it, and it tasted just like it did in the United States. I got the same burger, the same fries, and it was the biggest Five Guys that I have ever seen. This is a picture of my Five Guys burger and fries, All which right. looks just like it does here. Yeah, And that is a picture of just, just like it looks here. And this is in the Netherlands. Looks like I recorded a video. You did. It is. And look at how big this place is. It is giant. But that's yeah, that is five guys, the red and white. Yeah, look at how big it goes way over there. That's not mirrors. That's so guys, the rest of the thing. If you're just listening to this podcast, you have to come to YouTube and check it out because you get to see the video footage of what we're talking about. And this is in the square there in the Netherlands. They told me they had been open two months. And it was <laughs> the first five guys in the Netherlands. What other kind of uh places do they have over there from um here? it was most of it was places that I didn't recognize. Now they of course had a Kentucky fried chicken. Subway. They had a McDonald's, um, Subway, but none of that stuff was open in the morning. So you can eat fresh. Yeah. And when I walked out of my hotel room, I could I could go out of the front door and go left. If I went out of the front door and went left and then went right and crossed the street, the train station was about a block and a half that way, kind of at an angle. And if I would go, if where I went to do the crosswalk, if I went to the left, Right on the corner there was a um, was a uh, 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 come on Billy a casino. Do you remember I told you it was in the buildings? There was a casino there. But you said you turn it left. Right. Yeah, do it I? Was, it's right there, right by the okay. hotel. It's not like the Bo Ravage. No, like no, it's in the buildings. It's like part of the you know it's just a, a store in the buildings. And so you turn left, and there was a a little place there that that sold Belgian waffles. And so one of those days I went in there and got me a Belgian waffle with um with uh strawberries. And they even wrote my name on it, Spa Guy. I'll see if I could find yeah, that real quick. A, a video of that. So yeah. the McDonald's, the McDonald's, Billy, what time did they open in the morning? I think nine. So did, please tell me you tested the McDonald's out over there about their milkshakes after nine o'clock. Do they work? Does ice cream I did not work? ask about the milkshake. Every McDonald's here in the United States that I've ever stopped at to get a, uh, I would like a milkshake or an ice cream. Oh, sorry. Our ice cream machine is broken. Yeah. I didn't ask. 
every Mac. So come on, McDonald's. Let me ask y'all that. You do you not understand how much money your workers are losing? Y'all money corporate. Because I know I stopped in a McDonald's in Montana. They gave me the same thing that the one in Anniston or Talladega or somewhere Alabama gives gives you. They're always broken down after nine because nobody wants to work after nine. That's right. But nine a.m. is when they open. That's the uh, the Belgian waffle I got. You see, they put spaga on it. Spaga. It was fantastic. If they had that, I would go get one right now. And the guy was actually yeah. from Belgium. I talked to him and I filmed him and let him tell his story because he had just opened up as well. But he was when you turn the corner to the left, the the casino's on the corner. He's right next to it. And then you go down, there's a McDonald's down on the right. There was a Kentucky Fried Chicken on the left. And then you would turn left and go into the kind of the square area. And there was restaurants all around. But none of them were open first thing in the morning for you to go get breakfast. But the hotel had breakfast early in the morning. And you could go get, and I ate there one morning at that hotel I was staying at. And they had breakfast on the buffet. So I think it was about $15. And it was link sausage like I like and scrambled eggs with the milk in it. I mean, the food was, some of it was really, really good, and some of it was mad, but it wasn't inedible. That's what I'm saying. It was never a time, look at me, I eat. So there was never a time that I went, oh, I can't eat this. You know, it was not, it was nothing like that. But I spent a lot of time in Eindhoven, um, and I uh, went to the Phillips uh, Museum that I mentioned where they claimed they invented the light bulb and all that kind of stuff. Some other things that I did is I got, and what what I love is being on Facebook and being on YouTube and people know you're in their country, they try to start helping you. So I had a, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, and at the time I didn't know him, but he has become a good friend. He reached out to me and said, hey, I, um, let me, um, he reached out to me and said, hey, I know someone that knew the colonel. And that knew, um, that knew the colonel's sister and the colonel's sister's daughter, and tried to get a, a street named after the colonel in Breda, and so he put me in touch with that guy. Well, his name is uh, Patrick Van Lissom. So what we did was Patrick set it up with the guy to go film at his house. And so I go to a town and Patrick comes and picks me up in this town. I took a train to this town. Can't remember the town, but I can, you know, I can find it. It's in the videos. Yeah. Patrick picks me up and takes me to this guy's house. And he also took me through the town that he lived in on the way. And there was a church there that got bombed in World War II that has been rebuilt. You know, a lot of stuff got destroyed in World War II, but we go through his town and we go to this guy's house and his house was on a farm out in the country with that thatch roof. I don't know if you've ever seen one in person, but the roof looks like weed, reeds, and it's about that thick. So the roof is not is not uh, terracotta and it's not shingles like we use here. It's literally reeds. Wow. And they stick it on there and put it in bundles and then they trim it to match the house. And it's reeds about that thick, a beautiful brick home. In fact, let me see if I can find that. Um, I don't even know the name of the town to, to where to look. But I'm gonna try to look in um, in the Netherlands. Um, but that guy's house had been in uh, was involved in World War II, and oh. the, the Canadians fought the Germans there. And he told me we're sitting behind the house. And one thing I could say was everybody was very hospitable there. Yeah. And they would you would go to their house and they would make you cheese and and bring you water and bring you wine if you wanted it. And they would bring you all these, this, I went to this guy's house and his wife brought us out food to eat. We sat in the backyard. It was really nice weather. And we sat at this table in the backyard and just uh, relaxed at this table. And he very nonchalantly said, well, you know, there was a battle here. And in fact, when we pulled up there to go to his house, we went by a, um, there was this giant bell, bigger than the Liberty Bell on the side of the street that had this thing that was written that was talking about the, the Canadians that lost their life there battling the Germans. Yeah. And it turns out that every week or every, once a year, I should say, people come from Canada 
to commemorate that battle and the Canadians that lost their life there. And this is the bell, actually. Okay. And this is on his property. And so they come there on his property to commemorate that. And it says, on behalf of the 4th uh, Canadian Armed Division, the South Alberta Regiment, 29 uh, Canadian Armed Receipt Regiment, dedicates this monument to the honor of the 57 Canadians and 30 Dutch civilians who lost their lives fighting to preserve the liberty and freedoms during the savage battle of Wellberg and Steenberg. That's where I was. I was in Wellberg. So this guy has that on his property, and the people will come to his house to commemorate that once a year. And now let's fast forward. And he lives right next to it. And he just kind of nonchalantly, nonchalantly told me, and this is what I was talking about, the reeds. See the, the roof on there? That's actually reeds. The edge of it that you see is how thick the reeds are on the roof. It does look thick down the edge. And that's my friend uh, right there, Patrick, that's, that's when I was getting a picture. Helps so anyway, out. we're sitting behind the uh, the house. This is the guy that I interviewed. And this guy knows the colonel's history very well. Very nice man. And kind of a, a professor type guy. So we're sitting there behind the house. And he just nonchalantly goes, well, you know, a German soldier was dead right here where my garden is at. He was laying right here. You know, so there's, he's telling me all that stuff. But right. his house was literally involved in a battle in World War II, which is crazy. And um, and I just love that. And he learned about that history. And this he is... Shared, um, he shared that history with you that you filmed? Absolutely. Yeah, I've got it all filmed. That's him with Patrick. Patrick's sitting there to my left. Yeah. Patrick Van Lissom. And Patrick that, that lined all this up. And, and Patrick is still a good friend to today. Yeah, Patrick's and a good cool and he is a cool guy. And this is, that's the Colonel. That's some photos of the Colonel with his wife. And it's for some reason not wanting to do right. Let me fix it real quick. Yeah. The Colonel, are, I, I'm excited about, you know, I've been exploring the Colonel's life and I think we're going to have some future uh, projects with the Colonel, but man, fascinating story as well. That's uh, the Colonel with his wife and a baby. Look at that. Yeah. That's photos you've never seen. They're in books over in, in the Netherlands. Is that he in, showed me books. That there in Madison? That does not look like the Madison house to me, but I thought the same thing. And it may be around the end, but I don't think so. Okay. I'm not sure which house that is, but I thought the exact same thing when I saw it. And this is a picture of the Colonel. 1904, let's see. When Hollywood came to Tampa in 1943, Colonel was they right. knew him. They knew him as Joe Parker. That's the Colonel right there. Look at the Colonel. So at 43, so I don't know the dates, but you know, Colonel was he running that dog pound? Yeah, I think that was prior to that. And this is the sign that he was trying to get put up in Breda. They were trying to get a street named after the Colonel. Oh, yeah, and I see that. And he Colonel. worked on it for 20 years and could not get it done. Why? Well, I think you're about to get it done now, but he was born there in 1909. But anyway, this guy, his story was fascinating, the things that he knew. And um, this is, by the way, I mentioned my, my hotel room in Sonnenbrugel. That is out my window yeah. at night. Wow. Yeah, just beautiful. In fact, I'll look up Sonnenbrugel since I've talked about it. But this was his wife, and she actually made me food. I'll show you in a minute. She made me a salad. This is how hospitable these folks were. They just She just went and whipped me a salad up. It was really good. Colonel would be 114 years old today. Yeah. And um, th it. It, it's just a fascinating place. And this is an example of a place kind of like a uh, a superstore. This would be like um, <laughs> this would be kind of like a I, 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 uh, Home Depot, if yeah. you will. Oh, really? And this was their thing. See, it looks like a giant lamp. Yeah. So that was outside of all of those. And um, another thing, let me let me find Son and Brugel.
Breda. 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 Yeah, I don't know too many people that's actually explored and filmed the Colonel stuff. I have been to all of that stuff. And this is an example of some of the food for breakfast in the Sonnenbrugel. It looks good. Make him, yeah. Man, it's real good. And um, that was that tower I was telling you about with the clock on it. Yeah. That was, I think, 1700s. And by the way, in the Netherlands, they have a king and queen. So you, it's actually under. Did you get to interview the king and queen? No, I, I did didn't. Did everything else? Yeah. They might be fans. Spa guy. <laughs> and um, this is the, I was hoping I would see the name of that. This is that one, one stall elevator. You see, it just says lift on it. Yeah. And um, boy, time flies. But this was my room, and it was a very nice room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, didn't you stay in Elvis's room? Oh, no, the, yeah, the hotel? Yeah, didn't I you? did. it. That's in that's in uh, Germany. We'll get that's to That's going to be a different story. But this is the front of the Sonnenbrugel. Oh, the Sonnen Actually, I'm telling you wrong. You know, I keep saying Sonnenbrugel. Sonnenbrugel is the name of the town. <laughs> the name of this place is La Sonnery. La Sonnery. L A S O N N I E R E, La Sonnery. So if you look it up, that is a five star hotel beyond, beyond, Wait, beyond. Is that a five star? Do is I? That, that's a real five star hotel? Yes. A true you see, it says La Sonnery on the front. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let me see if I could find the lobster bisque. I bet you I took a picture. I took a picture of everything, that as you can imagine. Do what? How much was it? I have no idea. Would you pay $110 for it tonight? Absolutely. All day long. And um, the food was just fantastic. Every Everywhere in these hotels, the food was just always just unbelievable. And now something that was interesting is this is my room key. You see how it says 221? Yeah. You know what that is? Uh -huh. That is a stopper. You see where there's a groove right there? Yeah. There would be an O-ring, and that would be in your sink to stop the sink up. You know how the thing moves up and down? Yeah. All of the room keys were those, upside down with the thing missing. So you can use it? No, no. I'm saying it was used. Originally, it was inside of a sink. Oh, okay. They so just they took them out, and they had a hole in them, so they made them keychains. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Isn't yeah. that funny? That's great. Creative. He spent a few and, weeks out there, though. Yeah, I stayed uh, a long time at all these places. And this is an example of the, uh, that was when I was standing in the graveyard. You see the tower behind me. Wow. That's a cool statue of yeah. Jesus, too. Yeah, and those are the tombstones out there. Yeah. Just a, an amazing place, a lot to see, because it's all foreign to me. And I think I had a picture of the, um, of the king and queen here. Oh, so you did interview them? No, but there was there was banners. But you know, I may not have taken a picture. It's probably in a video. I'm sure it's in a video. Now, something else that they had was spa water. And when it says intense, it's sparkling. So it's got you know, I love sparkling water. That's just kind of my thing. I don't like that stuff. You don't like sparkling water? No, I just need me a nice cold. And this was the place behind the restaurant that you could just go outside and eat and sit and hang out. There was just a lot of places to go. In the in Europe, I found a lot of places to just go hang out, relax, right. beautiful scenery, just really nice, relaxing places. I think that the Europeans really take relaxing to a, a whole new level. Um, I didn't hear – you could walk through – and I even mentioned it in some of the videos. You walk through the towns – you know how when you're in, um, when you're walking through a town, you hear air conditioners and all that stuff. You go through these towns, they're dead quiet. You wow. don't hear people yelling. Wow. You don't hear dogs barking. You don't hear air conditioners because there aren't any. It's just quiet. 
And uh, I, I mentioned that in some of the videos. So if you go back and watch those videos, it's just fascinating. Um, and this is going by so fast. Um, let me try to think of something else um, that I can talk about real quick as we've got about five minutes left because I was going to go over into some other uh, towns, but I think, um, so let's go back to the Colonel at that town. So we ate with that guy. We talked about the Colonel at his house. We went inside and he had a grand piano and he played the grand piano and sang and all that stuff is in the video. It's just fascinating. Very, 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 and you could tell a very learned man, very intelligent. Him and his wife were so accommodating. And they didn't know that we were even coming until that day. But that guy even gets people from Canada to come over. And they talked about the battle. He took me outside and showed me where the German tanks were and where the Germans died at and how the war went, you know, how that battle went around his house. And he actually bought that house over 50 years ago. So once he learned about the battle being there, he bought the house and has lived there for 50 years. So that was in 2018. So just a fascinating guy, fascinating interview. Um, and we went outside and went and um, while we were there, this giant piece of farm equipment tried to pass us and we were in the road. We had to move over. And um, there's a lot. It's really very rural there. When you start getting out of town, farms, canals and everything is just it's all seems to be so organized, if you will, clean. Um, and that's another thing that I could say is most of the places that you went, there wasn't trash everywhere. If you go to Memphis today, there's trash everywhere. everywhere. It's literally just junk in the road, which is embarrassing. Garbage you don't, you don't yeah. see that over there. That's not a thing over there. Um, in the places that I went and I went in a lot of little towns, but that guy was just fascinating in that little, uh, in that little village where battles were literally fought around his house. And so we we're up on the, the up. three minutes. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. So we got three minutes left. So I'm going to go back to where I was staying in Eindhoven. So another thing that I did in Eindhoven was I went into the square there and there was these, there's statues of one of the Phillips there. And I started trying to learn about that. And the other things that I did was I went into when you get into another side of, of the town over there, there was a there's a giant soccer stadium over there that I was able to go up to the stadium. I went into these these stores and tried to talk to the clerks that sold like American tennis shoes. And they had all those kinds of things everywhere around there. And everything was was related to or built around the English language. So most of the places that you went, everybody spoke, spoke English. Most of the signs were written in English, so it was easy to move around in the towns. And easy, people were nice. They didn't say anything about me filming anything. I never had anybody go, oh, don't do that, you know, like they, they'll do over here. There was none of that. It was just very hospitable and very, very nice hotels. Every hotel that I stayed in was above and beyond most of the things that you would stay in. I didn't see any Hotel Sixes there. Let's just say that. Most of them were really nice. Uh, to give you an example of some of the places that we've stayed, it would be like the Thomas Jefferson in Richmond. Almost every hotel was that nice. Okay. That I stayed in was that kind of quality. Yeah, that was a nice place. It's a nice, nice hotel, just above, above, above. Um, and a lot of little cars there, by the way, a lot of smart cars. And not necessarily smart cars. There was a lot of other brands I saw were little tiny cars, so little that some of the people were driving them on the bike paths. And they were really cars, just little one-person cars and that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, but just my feeling was overall, it was just a, a nice place, a nice community. Um, we went to places. I went and ate ice cream at these different little shops. Uh, and I did a lot of walking and a lot of exploring, and all that is in these videos. If you go to the weekly Spa Guy, and you go back and you just put Spa Guy in Netherlands, you'll find these things, or Spa Guy, and what was the name of that little town that I mentioned a while ago? Um, yeah, it was... Uh, where the, the war was. Um, I think it was May the 8th, right? 
Yeah, I, I think those shows they're like an hour. You have like a lot of hour versions. They're four hours long. Walking, walking around. Yeah, I, they're one hour shows, four to a series, if yeah. you will. And I explore all of these different places and and talk about that. And that's actually not right. I cannot now remember the name of the town, but it's where the Canadian. I'm gonna just put bell in. It'll search for a bell. It's amazing what you can do with first thing it brought up was the Liberty okay. Bell, but this bell in this guy's yard was larger than the Liberty Bell. Uh, the, uh, it's not going to pull up, but it does pull a picture of, of Lori and I with the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. up. It's much smaller than I expected. I thought it was big as a car and it's not, <laughs> but anyway, that is the end of this episode. Friends. I am glad that y'all stopped in. And I've got Siri typing what I'm saying. And uh, we'll get to some more episodes. We'll talk about, I went to Rotterdam, which is where the Colonel left uh, on the cruise ship to come to America. But a lot of other stuff happened around Rotterdam. I also went to Breda several different times. Another thing that I did was went to France, yeah. where all the stuff in Paris also went to Germany. So different episodes, we'll talk about these different places and some different experiences and things that happen. And uh, I hope y'all enjoy this kind of stuff. I enjoy reminiscing about it. But if you really want to learn about them, go to my channel, Weekly Spa Guy, which is different than my regular Spa Guy channel, and put, for instance, uh, uh, Spa Guy and um, Eindhoven. And it'll pull up all the things related to Eindhoven. Another thing I did was went out to um, uh, the lady that built the miniature Graceland. I went to her house, and uh, she's going to kill me because her name is escaping me right this moment. Come on, Billy. Um, ah, come on. I can't time. believe. Ah. Must be a long day for you today. It, is, it has been a long day. And I can't believe that I'm that I'm drawing a blank. And I, uh, uh, Lita is her name, Lita Kaiser Kaiser, and she's I've got videos about. I show you the miniature Graceland, but I filmed when I left there. When I came home from the Netherlands or from the Europe, I had 65 hours of footage. Plus, wow. and that's not counting my glory footage, my drone footage. Yeah. But anyway, it was a lot of fun. It was an experience, and I'm getting ready to travel again, as I mentioned later this year. This time, I'm going to the center of the universe, Israel, Jerusalem. And uh, and I'm going to tell stories from there. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm actually studying with a guy that has been 41 times and about what to look for and all the stories and that kind of stuff. And and uh, I'm just, I'm excited about all that and, and looking forward to the future. Thank you all so much for listening and watching. And we will see you next week. Tighten up every chance you get. And don't double dribble.